Welcome to Manga Book Club. Today we're talking about Good Morning Psychopath, a manga written by Amoy Gemba who, according to the wiki, has no blood. So we share that in common. The translation group that made the version I read was FE Scans. They did some great work on it. I'll do a short review of the manga before we commit to reading the major themes. I will do some plot explanations for context. However, I'd rather you read the manga and come back. It takes about two to three hours to finish. Plus, the video will make so much more sense if you actually know what I'm talking about. It does have a few good twists, but they make rereading it very exciting rather than being something that, once you know, the story is ruined kind of thing. Still, if you're only in it for the first read, it's well worth it. That's the final line for the spoilers, by the way. From now on, it's Spoiler City. Real Spoiler Metro. The Spoiler Factory. They recently started zoning the Spoiler Residential neighborhood. You know, I think I saw you in Spoiler Downtown. Alright, so the story has a few themes, but I want to focus on the humanity versus artificiality. If you raised a robot exactly like me, would the robot make the same decisions that I did? Well, like most things, it's in the nuance and the little details. So let's start by spoiling the whole manga. There are two pairs representing humanity and artificiality in this manga. Rika and Hakamori form the first pair, and Lily and Kazuke form the second. So first, Hakamori and Rika. Hakamori is a weird guy. Basically from the start, he wasn't good at empathizing with other people. However, instead of turning into the Joker, he became extremely invested in the divide between himself and humanity. His first choice was biological research, but after meeting Rika, he decides to pivot that biological research into robotic. Because in Rika, he sees everything that humanity is, joy, sadness, getting embarrassed because the guy you think is cool proposes to you on the first time you talk to him. How can this be? This manga is in the final stage its entire trip. It's really good, you should read it. Anyway, Rika is just a normal human. She grew up normal, and outside of her interest in Hakamori, she's pretty standard. The ways they differ is mostly implied, but it's specific in the way they interact with her son, Kazuke. Rika is loving, caring, and spends her time with her son. All of Kazuke's morality and understanding of the world comes from Rika, and we're just going to assume that through nurture that you inherit the morals and principles of the parent that you bonded with the most. So that would form half of the second pair, Kazuke, uh, but then we have Lily. Hakamori raised Lily by himself. Oh no. Alright, so Lily isn't a true morality void. She was programmed with the inability to kill Kezuke, so it's great at least we got one of the laws figured out. However, through Lily's interactions with Kezuke, we can see how Hakamori figured you'd learn if you were starting from square one. But the divide between Kezuke and Lily is huge. Human inferences about the nature of life and death, hierarchies that we just internalize, Lily has none of those. Actually, the place that Lily is starting from is extremely early in development. Let's start with Lily and Kezuke's discussion on the formation of their self-awareness. Lily talks about figuring out spatial reasoning. She couldn't see properly. The scenery only looked like clumps of light. Everything looked like lines in midair, but when she touched one, it formed the connection of sight and space. From that starting point, she figured out space and distance. I don't know if you remember your first memory. Well, that's slightly misleading. I don't know if you remember your first thought. Most people forget because it's so mundane. It can pile in with a number of other things that were happening at the time. I think that I have an answer for mine. I was sitting next to a sliding glass window, putting ornaments on a Christmas tree. I can't remember if that was real or a dream. It feels like when life started, but I can't be sure. When Lily asks Kazuke if he remembers, he says no, which makes sense, because no one can. You can think back as far as your memory allows and arbitrarily pick something that feels like when everything started, but self-awareness is a gradient. Uh, in my opinion, I did a fair bit of reading and I'm sure there's a scientific answer, but I couldn't find a consensus. Being able to remember that moment is something fundamentally unique to Lily, but considering the framing of the story, it's not human. Let's look at another piece of humanity. This one's more spelled out in the actual manga, but it's the storybook. Lily and Kazuke were both read the same book when they were developing. Kazuke barely remembers the details of the story, but remembers that his mom would read it to him. Lily remembers all the detail, cause she's a computer, but it's an allegory. When fed into her brain, she downloads it all literally. But why didn't Kazuke experience this? Well, the manga points at the frog and the butterflies, but I like the food example for how it's handled. Lily doesn't need to eat, so for her entire life, the idea of consuming another creature just doesn't come up. Kezuke's mother taught him how to cook, and since then, he's known there's an implicit hierarchy of life. Is that good? Is that bad? Uh, it's not my fight. But, for the purpose of this manga, a fish has less value than a human life because we need it to survive. 
Since that calculation is absent from Lily, fish and humans are worth the same. It's an artificial calculation rather than a gut feeling. So where does the story go with this conclusion? It's told us there's a divide between humans and machines, but what do we do? Well, let's see how it ends. Kazuke is trapped in a wildfire with a bag of cats, and is looking to Lily for a solution. The only way out is through the flames, and the bag they have is basically non-carcinogenic asbestos. Lily has to pick between Kazuke, one life, or a bag of cats, which is ten lives. Lily is made out of the material the bag is, so she'll be able to run through the fire. Kazuke, in this moment, is unsure if Lily would pick him. Hakamori calls and says, Alright son, Lily is a robot, full stop, I'm forcing her to pick you. And Kazuke is angry that he'd deprive Lily of the ability to make the decision. So, he destroys the phone, but the damage is done. Lily throws away the idea that she could be human, and chooses to save Kazuke. But, we'll ask something of Kazuke. When she's rebuilt, instead of becoming another attempt in humanity, she asks instead to be a robot. Her desire is to save people, and her current form cannot. So, Kazuke escapes, saves two of the cats, and Lily sacrifices herself by putting her body over the other seven, leaving one in her heart, which lets it survive. The story moves two years into the future, and Lily's final wish means development has shifted. Instead of being human and trying to bridge the divide between artificiality and humanity, she's embraced her artificiality. Instead of being one extremely lifelike robot, she's a small army of drone-like search and rescue bots, embracing her qualities as a robot to save as many people as she can. So the divide. It feels impossible to cross. Humans and artificial beings are unique, and Humanity has an outlook on the world that's grown from centuries of being on this planet. An artificial life may learn the rules, but our development couldn't be further from each other. Trying to recreate the systems that shape us and who we are will never produce the same person. Well, that's a depressing place to take it, but that's how I feel the story portrayed those themes. Do I think we could create a lifelike robot that could form a human soul? Nah, I, I agree with the story. I think humanity and robots are just too separate to ever create a truly human robot. However, I think robots could develop really interesting philosophy by themselves. Unburdened from human patterns of thinking, they could reach new and strange conclusions. But, well, we all seem to learn from our parents. Robots that we create will just mirror us in strange and unique ways. But it'll take a lot of iteration before they're reaching alien conclusions and not just doing what we do, but in one specific way. Thanks for watching. Uh, probably my longest in-dev video yet. I'll try to turn these around shorter in the future. Any manga suggestions? I'll probably talk about my top five and the themes I like from those. Anyway, goodbye. Minor edition. I noticed that there was a long strip that took all the characters and put them in a comedy setting. I finished reading it and there's nothing really to say about it so uh just telling you that i did read it this the video's over now goodbye